All right, next I am going to go over the preferences that I have in Adobe Audition. And hopefully I can remember everything that I've changed. It's been a few years uh, since I've looked at it, but I'll leave the preferences on screen for each tab so you can look at them. So you can go up to here, you can go to preferences and you can go to general, or you can hit control shift K to bring up in all of these preferences. And I will, like I said, I will leave up all of these uh, tabs so you can take a look at it but I will go over the ones that I know that I'm pretty sure that I have changed. So um, the first one is the mouse wheel zoom. Um, I have it at zoom at mouse position. Um, and that one actually, I don't even know, if I'm, I'm not even positive if I changed that one, but that one is very important to my editing technique. Um, so that's basically when you're, con when you're zooming in, um, on the timeline, it's zooming in to where the mouse is being pointed, not to where the playhead is at. Um, and then the default fade curve type I have on linear or logarithmic rather than cosine or S curve. I just like the way l the linear slash logarithmic sounds more than the cosine. This is certainly just a preference for me, but that's just how I like it. Um, appearance, I don't have anything there. Uh, you can look through mine to make sure yours looks similar. I don't think I changed anything. Audio channel mapping is going to uh, depend entirely on your setup in uh, whatever audio hardware that you have. Speaking of audio hardware, kind of the same thing. Um, you just want to make sure your input and your output are on the same uh page that are set to what you uh, want them to be. Latency, uh, it's not a big deal unless you are recording and you want to monitor yourself through Audition. I monitor myself through my um, audio interface, so I don't really need to mess with this latency at all. Uh, and then whatever sample rate you want your recordings to be at. Uh, auto save. It auto saves every ten minutes. Um, you can change this for whatever you like. I don't think that I changed it at all. Uh, control surface. I'm not sure. I think that's if you have like a third party um, hard piece of hardware um, data. Uh, I believe I did not change anything here. But you can smooth or delete cut boundaries with crossfades and smooth all edit boundaries by crossfading. And this is in the destructive editor versus the non-destructive editor. If we are in like the multi-track, which is a non-destructive editor, these don't matter because they will add uh, crossfades no matter what. But if we are in the not, or if we are in the destructive editor, then it will not, you won't be able to see the crossfades being added. So it's just telling you here that they are being added. Effects, uh, I don't believe that I changed anything through here. I haven't looked through these super carefully, so you can just look what I have checked and unchecked. Media and disk cache, um, you can always clear your cache, uh, clean your uh, cache database. If your audition is running super slow, you might be um, harboring more cache than you really need to be. Um, memory, I have uh, pretty much all of my RAM reserved for Audition and Premiere. Um, six gigs of RAM is for all the other applications. You can change this however you need. Um, you can, you know, move this up and down to reserve RAM for other stuff. Markers and metadata, I don't believe that I've changed anything here. Again, take a look. Uh, see if it looks similar to yours. Multi-track. Um, let's see. De default panning mode, I believe I changed. Uh, left to right cut logarithmically rather than a minus 3 dB center cut. Um, the reason I changed it here is because um, if you have it on minus 3 dB center cut, then it will, you will be hearing the audio um, with a minus three dB cut uh, every time you listen to it on multi-track. And you don't want that. You want to hear, 
you know, the actual audio that's going through Audition. So uh, I have it there. I don't think that I messed with anything uh, during loop playback, loop at the end of the last clip. Um, that will be, that's always nice if you're looping things. Uh, multi-track clips. I, again, I don't believe that I've changed anything here. You can take a look. Playback and recording. Let's see. Return playhead to start position. I believe that I have unchecked that. I think that comes checked. Uh, auto scroll. I definitely do not have that checked. Um, that is pretty important. Um, you don't want auto scroll if you are using the same process that I'm using. And same with return playhead to start position. You don't want that checked. Uh, play audio while scrubbing. Uh, you, you definitely want that to be able to listen while you are scrubbing. Spectral displays, I didn't change anything. Time display, I did not change anything. And then video, uh, who edits video in Audition anyways. So those are my preferences. Uh, hopefully that helped out. Um, next, I want to talk about my keyboard shortcuts. And this is the fun part to me. So you can hit Alt-K to bring up your keyboard shortcuts. Or you can go into Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. All right, I have changed a bunch of keyboard shortcuts in Audition. And that is to keep my hand in one position and to be able to easily reach everything that I need with one hand. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll probably show a little visual here of how uh, my hand is resting on my keyboard, but my pinky is on my control key, my ring finger is on the Z key, my middle finger is on the X key, and my pointer finger is on the space bar, and then I can easily move around uh, from there. So, the first thing that I want to talk about is shuttle right. Um, I have that mapped to the A key, and shuttle right just basically is like a fast forward key. It's uh, if you hit if you hit A right now, it will play at two times speed. So that's a pretty used key in editing. Uh, the next one is Q zoom reset time. What does that mean? Uh, that means that if you are very zoomed in. Let's say you're doing some minute detail editing and you want to just check the entire timeline of what the whole thing looks like. Then you can just hit Q and it will zoom all the way out and show the entire thing. And sometimes you just need to check what something looks like um, in reference to the rest of it. So it's mostly just to kind of get some perspective there. Uh, Z is another one that gets a lot of use uh, is ripple delete time selection in all tracks. And that is, if I have something highlighted on the track, it will collapse it and send absolutely everything on the timeline on all the tracks backwards with it, so it'll keep everything in time. So uh, that's another one that I have that I use a lot. Um, X is to select clips to end of session. Uh, and that is, if I hit X, it will highlight all of the clips uh, after the playhead. And that's useful for uh, if I don't want to ripple delete something, or let's say I did, I ripple delete and I want to create a crossfade, then I can ripple delete, hit X to highlight everything afterwards. And that way, if I move that clip to get a crossfade, uh, it will keep everything in time after the playhead. And that will make more sense. All of these will make more sense as we are going through them. And I'll try and uh, be clear of what keys that I'm using when, but this is another one that I use all the time, hundreds and hundreds of times per um, edit. S uh, is scroll to playhead. Uh, and that is basically like, that's why we don't need the auto scroll uh, enabled because we have this. So whenever the playhead is off screen, we can just hit S and go right to where it is as it is playing. And that is so we can do stuff outside of where we are playing. So we can move ahead in, in the podcast and make little edits that we know we're going to need to make um, as we go. And then if we hear a mistake, we can hit S and quickly jump to exactly where the playhead is. Um, okay, E is move playhead to endpoint. 
and that is, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll go over this as uh, we are editing this one. Uh, I don't use as much, but we will be using it. Um, D is the move tool. That is how we're going to be moving clips around more easily inside of the multi-track editor. C is split. Um, that's kind of like your cut tool in Premiere, if you've used that or if you're familiar with that. Um, it's basically just like to split the clip in half uh, wherever the playhead is. Um, F, enable clip keyframe editing. Uh, again, we will go over this, but that's just to turn on and off the ability to add keyframes to your uh, audio. And that's, it's really convenient. Uh, I'll show you why uh, once we get going. V is the time selection tool. Uh, again, I'll go over that once we get into it. Now, uh, control plus Q is to toggle looping. Uh, that's like if we have a section highlighted and we want it to loop over and over and over, uh, we can enable or disable uh, the ability to do that. Control A is to select everything on the timeline, period. Just select all. Uh, control Z is undo. Control X is delete. Uh, control C is copy. Control V is paste, obviously. Control N is to create a new multi-track session. Uh, and then we move to shift. So shift A. That is to zoom out full all tracks. Uh, that is not zooming out on the timeline. That is zooming out on all of the tracks that are on the left-hand side. So I'll, again, I'll go over that. That'll make more sense once we get it. Once we get into it, uh, shift S is to zoom in full on the selected track. Again, that is zooming, not zooming in on the timeline, but zooming in on the tracks to make the tracks bigger, uh, bigger or smaller on the timeline. Uh, what do we have next here? Shift X is to zoom to preset one. So you can set presets uh, to where you want the window of time you want to be zoomed in at on your timeline. Um, and this is super useful if you want to quickly be able to zoom in a ton without having to hit control and scroll and find find your spot and, and all of that. So we can quickly zoom in to exactly one preset and then shift C is to zoom to preset two, which is basically we can zoom in and zoom out very, very quickly with a set uh, time frame. Okay, that is all of the keyboard shortcuts that I know that I have changed or at least that I use all the time. I didn't necessarily change all of them, but that is uh, all the keyboard shortcuts that I use uh, on a daily basis.